Welcome back to the vlog. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, took some time off to go down to San Diego and uh, check out some colleges uh, with, for the kid. And uh, while we were down there, I was able to sneak away and play a little poker. Uh, this session is from Oceans 11 in Oceanside, California. It's about half hour north of San Diego. And I was really impressed with the room. Uh, of course, it's a tent now, but it's still impressive. The, uh, the wait list was not as long as many other of the casinos. Their COVID uh, protocols are good. They played eight-handed with plexiglass, and the action was very good. Anyway, got into some really interesting spots, one of which I, I know you guys are going to be uh, talking about. But uh, anyway, sit back, relax, enjoy and uh here it comes so we arrive at oceans 11 as you can see by this sign that their hours of operations have been impacted due to COVID, i assume and uh, games don't get started until 9 a.m i got there around 10 and it was very busy already the lists were long but very manageable whenever they got enough for a game they spread a game it's very nice to see that never a long wait to get into action we decided to jump into the 2-3 game and our name was up for the 2-5 game as well. I had a few issues recording because my phone was bumped into time-lapse mode. So there are three or four hands where the quality of the video sucks and it's just because of me. So please bear with it. They are important hands and they needed to be shown. So here we go. First interesting hand of the day, I have two kings in the big blind. There were three limpers. I raised 20 more when it comes back to me. Only the first limper puts in the call and we go heads up to a flop. He's been extremely active since he's been at the table for the last 20 or 30 minutes. Flop comes down 10, eight, seven, rainbow. Uh, not a great flop for my particular hand. It looks like I might have missed, so I checked just to let him hang himself because he's been very aggressive. And I go into check call mode. Turn card is a 10 of diamonds, another bad card. If he has a 10, he has me crushed right now, but it's most likely he has a pair or some sort of straight draw. I check, he bets 40 and I put in the call. Looking for a clean river. And the ace of hearts definitely isn't that. I checked to him again. In his eyes, I imagine this looks like I might have made a pair of aces because I could have a hand like ace jack and been calling them down. And he fires out a very large bet of $200. This bet looks very scary at first, especially with that river card. But if you take a moment to think about it, what hands would he bet this way? I mean, it would have to be three tens or better or nothing. If he had a hand like ace nine, would he really bet 200 on the river with an ace? I don't think so. He either has to have three tens or a straight, and I just don't think he does. So I snap call him with my kings and he just mucks his hand and we take down this first pot. A little while later, we get one early limper. I raced a 20 with ace queen offsuit and the same player from the last hand calls on the button for the $20 and we go heads up to a flop. And the flop is, yeah, not too bad. Seven, five, three with two spades. So I don't think he has anything like that. And I think my ace high is good. So I lead for 20 and he quickly calls. Turn card is probably the best one I can imagine. It's a queen of spades. So I got top pair and the nut flush draw. I bet 45 and now he does something interesting. He just raises to 200 and my initial feel on this was, I don't think he has a flush. I mean, he's been very aggressive and I'm thinking he might just have a queen. And if he has a queen, I definitely love my hand. If he has a flush, I still have some outs. So I decided just to rip it in here. He has about 
40 to 160 left in front of him. And I'm thinking, I, I, I think I'm way ahead of the hands he would be doing this with. So I go ahead and rip it. He snap calls and we're off to see a run out. And the river card was black, but it was a three of clubs. I show my ace queen and he showed me he had ace queen also. So I had a free roll and missed it. All right, put your seatbelts on for this one. The aggressive player opens for 12, two people call. I call from the big blind with pocket sevens looking for a nice set mining opportunity. And we get a beautiful flop of ace, seven, deuce with two diamonds. I check over to the aggressive player who leads out for 25. There's another very conservative player who puts in the call for the 25. I'm thinking he has an ace or possibly a flush draw. I decided let's build the pot and let's build it now, trying to get stacks in. So I raise to 80. And now the uh, player, the aggressive player, just pushes his blue chips in and, and says call. He has exactly 80 in the rack of blue chips. And my first thought was that he was shoving all in and I was getting all excited, but he did say call before he moved the rack in. And the other player goes into the tank and when he does, I'm not putting him on a flush draw anymore. I'm putting him on an ace. I figure for an additional $55, anyone with a flush draw would continue. So I'm thinking one more ace is out of that deck and I have this guy right where I want him. The person ends up folding and we see a turn card of a nine of clubs. Perfect turn card. I decided to bet 150 just in case he has some sort of draw instead of an ace but i was pretty sure he had an ace and he just rips it in and i snap call very happy to get it in with him until he turns over pocket aces the one time i set mine and trap somebody i get trapped myself this one hurt quite a bit i already had that money spent Player under the gun opens for a raise to 12. I make it 45 with two queens from the hijack and both blinds call and the early limper. So we're going four ways to a flop of king, six, deuce, rainbow. And just to sum up how this uh, day has been going, uh, the per first person leads out for $100. The, ne the next two people call. Of course, I end up mucking. They all three of them had a king on this particular hand and it just was going bad. They did call me over to the 2-5 game just as this hand was taking place. So I figured maybe the Holden gods were telling me I should go play a little 2-5. So when the action gets to me, I end up folding and hopping over into the 2-5 game. Please excuse the camera again. First hand in the 2-5 uh, game we play, we have two eights under the gun, open to a raise to 15. The player on our direct left puts in the raise to 45. He seems like a very solid player. I did end up chatting with him a little bit afterwards and uh, he seems like a really nice guy. I put in the call and so did one other player. So we go three ways to a flop with 142 in, and the flop comes queen, queen, four with two spades. Uh, I end up checking the person to my direct left puts in a continuation bet for 65. I really like his sizing on this bet. 65 definitely puts pressure on draws and on hands like mine, you know, middling pocket pairs. The next player thinks for a little bit before finally deciding on a fold and when it comes back to me, I'm thinking pocket eights is probably good in most situations. He could have a middling pocket pair, but he has to be wary of me having a queen. So I put in the call, expecting the turn to go check, check, unless he has a queen himself. So with 272 in, we see a turn card of a two of clubs, definitely a blank in my mind. It does put up a second flush draw. 
I check it over to him and he checks it back. So once he checks back, I'm thinking his range is more lean towards ace-king, ace-jack, and not so much on the medium pocket pairs. He could be trapping with a hand like jacks, tens, but the river card is a five of diamonds. I feel it's fairly safe. I'm willing to call off a pretty good sized bet, check it over to him, and he quickly checks it back. So our eights win this first pot in the 2-5 game, and we're off to a better start. In this next hand, I have queen, jack of hearts in the big blind. The person under the gun limps, and then the next person to act raises to 20. I figure this is good. So I put in the call, and so does the person behind me. Flop comes jack, deuce, deuce. So it hits me pretty good. I check to the raiser, and he puts out a small continuation bet of $15. I think this feels more like a probing type of bet. And I put in the call rather quickly. The next player folds. Turn card comes is a ace of diamonds. Definitely a bad card. It hits the uh, initial raiser's range very hard. And with his pro bet, it could very easily look like he has an ace. So I checked it over to him. And when he placed his bet, it was awkward. It was not like he was trying to get value out of an ace. It was more like he was trying to represent an ace. And with this information, I decided that I'm going to end up calling him down. And his bet was for 65, much larger than his initial pro bet. And I think he's doing a fairly good job at representing what he's supposed to have. But it looks like he's just representing it in my mind. So I call... We see a river card of a seven of hearts. I check it over to him again. And now it looks like he's trying to figure out whether he should go for it or not. And he's just trying to compile a bet that he thinks I'm going to fold to. And I can't really explain exactly what it was, but it seemed very obvious to me. I only played with this player for maybe 10 minutes and I'm just seeing this and it reminded me of another betting style someone else had against me when they were bluffing. He ends up betting 145. Going with my read, I put in the quick call. I expect to take this down, and he does show two sixes, so we turned his pair of sixes into a bluff when the ace came. Luckily, I had my read, and I stuck with it. The player from under the gun opens for 20. I'm next to act, and I just call with my ace-king suited. Normally this is a three bet, but every once in a while I'll mix in a call for deception purposes, and especially when it comes from an under the gun razor. We get one call from behind us, and then the button ends up putting in the jam. He's been playing a short stack jam type of style. I've seen him do this twice in the, in the last half hour or so. So I'm gonna be calling off here the player to my right, the initial raiser, puts in the fold. And to isolate the other player behind us, I go ahead and re-jam for my stack of 950. And I get it heads up with the button. I'm thinking their range is something like ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack, maybe a small pair. And we go off to see a flop. The flop is not very good. It comes queen nine seven with one diamond so i think i'm behind the ace queen or but then i catch a six of diamonds have a little hope and a four of diamonds i make the nut flush he moans and groans a little bit about a bad beat i think that my range was probably ahead of his so can't be too bad a couple of the live players from the two five game ended up going broke or leaving so i decided to quit the game and see where my uh my ride situation was so I called my wife and she says go back and play for a couple hours so I jumped back into a 2-3 game and uh, sat there for maybe the first hour with absolutely nothing going on finally I pick up ace jack suited there was a raise from under the gun from an aggressive player to 13 I decided to isolate him raise to 35 he puts in the call 
On the flop comes Jack 6-3, so bingo. He checks to us, we bet 35 and take this first one down. A few hands later, we're in the big blind. There were four limpers, so I raise to 38 from the big blind, just trying to take down the, the limp money. And I get a call from the first limper. I don't know what a first limper would limp and call a $35 raise with, but uh, 655 is probably not it. So on the flop, I decided to bet $60, representing some sort of overpair. And he actually thinks for a little bit and decides on putting in a call. This is a pretty expensive price to pay for a float, so I'm thinking he might have some sort of middling pocket pair. And now I need to catch something, and luckily enough, I catch a jack on the turn. I just jam it. It's about a pot size bet with what, what he has left, and he quickly folds, and we take this one down. The very next hand, there was a early position raise to 11 and two callers, and it comes back to me in the uh, small blind, and I got ace king, and I put in a hefty size raise to 65. It folds everyone out except for the second caller, who's a very conservative uh, player. The flop comes eight, six, three, two diamonds, and I just jam. I don't think they're gonna call anything unless they have a very big hand. And I just wanna take this one down. They have about 180 left in their stack, and they ended up putting in the fold, and we walk away from the game with a nice little win. My ride's only a few minutes away, so we end up cashing out for a win of $380. Lost a little in that 2-3, but got it back in the 2-5. Overall, I'm very impressed with Ocean's 11's Casino. I thought it was well run, well managed. The game flow was very even. If you wanted to switch tables, they were accommodating. If you wanted to change limits, they got you on the list and you were moved over quickly. On a scale to 1 to 10, I would give it a 9 out of 10. It probably would have been a 10 out of 10 if my pocket 7s held up against those pocket aces. But, uh, you know, that's poker. Anyway, I appreciate you guys tuning in and watching. As always, please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time on the vlog. We have another session from Southern California coming up soon. And uh, stay tuned for that. That's an interesting one as well.